Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday looking forward to another video. Well, we've been discussing some wonderful things lately. And of course, we've been through a very long series on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we've also been looking quite a bit at the difference between the spiritual world and our choices in the spiritual world and then the earthly world, I don't like to call it the natural world, because what's natural to a believer is everything spiritual and of God. And today and probably the next video, we'll just talk a little bit about the love of God, kind of interject some things that I think will be really fresh and, and nice for everybody just to continue to keep before you. We're not losing focus because we certainly are concerned, number one, with allowing God to be tangible and real. I always like to say it, and you've heard me say it so many times, let them come off the pages of your Bible and live in your life. That means you'll have testimonies where God is doing things and bringing influence. And influence is the grace of God. God's grace, praise the Lord, has influenced us spiritually, mentally, physically, and we want to experience that on a regular basis. And not just the benefit. We want to learn how to hang out with God himself, with Jesus, the Holy Ghost, amen, uh, recognizing and fellowshipping with the grace of God all day long. These are the importance uh, and the reasons why these videos are important. So uh, let's go ahead and just jump right back into the greatest invitation that I know of in the scriptures. It just comes from Jesus himself. Of course, you know, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, we understand. That is such an amazing invitation to be born again. But now notice how Jesus talks in Matthew 11, 27 to 30. In the Message Bible, it says this. Now Jesus resumed talking, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the Son the way the Father does, nor the Father the way the Son does, but I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. This is so good, and we're going to go right now over to 1 Corinthians in chapter 13, and we would normally call this kind of like you'd say, well, this is the love chapter. Well, I think that today, as we talk about this, you'll see that there's some really interesting thoughts here concerning this love chapter that I believe you'll find to be awesome. So let's read, and this is from the Amplified. I think it just does the best job there is. It says, okay, let's see. Verse 4, love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy, is not boastful or vainglorious, does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude and unmannerly and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice in injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes, is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. Well, as we read this, <clears throat> this is a great passage of Scripture. 
And uh, we've always, now, now remember, uh, there has been so much time in the, uh, the history of man where man has been under the law, the to-do list, all the things that man has to, in fact, today, the to-do list still rules most people. That's why on our phones, you know, we can put the remember or the notes. And I always use that. Remember at such and such a time for such and such a thing. Because there's many things that we have to do. But remember, in the Garden of Eden, if you go back to the bookends, you'll see that our time really was spent with the Lord. There wasn't so much this great responsibility of doing as much as it was a responsibility of continuing to enjoy the presence of God. So tending the garden was much more than pulling weeds. It really was tending the garden of a man's soul. In other words, cultivating the relationship with God, protecting the relationship with God. That would be another good way to say it. So we have been for so long under the microscope of job performance. How well do you perform? Are you good enough? Or are you not good enough? Did you, did you make sure that today you didn't sin at all? Or did you sin? Or, you know, listen, if you're going to live under that microscope, you're always going to find yourself coming up short. But I mentioned that because I want you to know that we can look at other areas of scripture with the same microscope. And here we have this tremendous love chapter, you know, talking about what God has done, God's love. And what we want to do without thinking about it is make it look like, okay, these are the things now that I have to do to be acceptable with God. Folks, I really want to share with you that the greatest part of the things that I have already read and, and will continue to read as far as 1 Corinthians 13, this is how God loves you. This is how the love of God in Christ is able now to love you. <clears throat> where he loves long and endures long and God is patient and kind and never envious nor boiling over with jealousy is not boastful or vainglorious does not display himself haughtily God is not conceited arrogant inflated with pride and he is not rude or unmannerly and does not act unbecomingly God's love in us God does not insist on his own rights and his own ways for it is not for he is not self-seeking he is not touchy or fretful or resentful he takes no account of an evil done to him pays no attention to a suffered wrong god does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness but rejoices when right and truth prevail god bears up under anything and everything that comes he is ever ready to believe the best of every person he hopes and his and his hopes are fadeless under all circumstances and he endures everything without weakening. God never fails, becomes, fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. Now are you seeing here, if you look at things in this particular perspective, all of a sudden now, 1 Corinthians 13 becomes, really does become the love chapter because as you begin to see how God loves you, all of a sudden it opens up your heart to appreciate someone that loves you that way. Now we're going to see here that the key to you being able to actually express the love of God to, you, to God himself and to others is first and foremost being able to receive it from God himself. Well, wow, that's a really big point, but such a, such a good point. Of course, we know this, 1 John 3.16 says, no, this isn't John 3.16, it's 1 John 3.16. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, but it goes right into John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In other words, that would receive the life of God and experience life as God in the earth. No, thank God we're not God. Amen. We'd mess everything up. But he made us so much like himself and put his own nature within us that we can experience life as he does in a place of, of authority, in a place of dominion. Well, that shouldn't shock us at all because that's how God made man in the first place. Genesis chapter 1, 26 and 27. He gave dominion over all the earth to Adam and everything that he had made. And now, in Christ, we've been raised up to sit together in heavenly places, and we have dominion not only in this world, but also in the other world. We are co-laborers with Christ. We shouldn't feel like this is something that we shouldn't take into ourselves, like we're taking something that we 
We dare not. No, this is something God gave us in Christ. This is his love. And when you see his love like this, all of a sudden it produces all kinds of amazing boldness in your life and appreciation. And again, what we're, what we're experiencing here, like we have been all along, is when we begin to experience the grace of God, such tremendous reverence comes to our heart. The fear of the Lord, no, not being afraid, but being in awe of God, being in a place of putting him first in our life where he has every part and compartment of our life. The more we experience him, my goodness, well, of course, it obviously all, you know, works with the word, bears witness with it. But the more we experience him, the more we want to, and the more we want to give that same experience to others. Mm, really good. First John 4, 7 to 21 says, My beloved friends, let us continue to love each other since love comes from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and experiences a relationship with God. The person who refuses to love doesn't know the first thing about God because God is love. Isn't that interesting? The person who refuses to love doesn't know anything about God because when you begin to know about God and his love, then that's going to propel you, encourage you like a dynamo to be able to love other people correctly. It's very difficult to love someone else when your perspective of love is skewed to begin with. But when you see love like God, that's 1 Corinthians 13. That's how God loves you. He's not holding anything against you. I mean, he believes in the best in you. He's not even believing in the worst. He's not holding anything uh, against you. Like David said, blessed is a man whose sins are removed, his transgressions forgiven. So thank God when you see how God loves you, that's what encourages you to love others. And if you're not loving others in a godly way, that's because you really don't understand that God loves you that way. It goes on to say, you can't know him if you don't love him. This is how God showed his love for us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Verse 10, this is the kind of love we are talking about. Not that we once uh, upon a time loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God. So notice the kind of love he's talking about is not how well we portray the love. It's how well we receive the love. Receiving the love of God the way that God shows us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is, my friend, it's an empowerment for you to be able to express yourself properly because there's something working in you that's not just information. I'm not telling you to go to 1 Corinthians 13 and begin to memorize it so you have information. I'm telling you, go 1 Corinthians 13 and meditate for a while. Get quiet for a while. Go out and look at the beauty of nature and the things that are around you like we've been sharing with you of grace testimonies. Find grace somewhere and begin to let God soothe your soul, bring peace to your mind, joy to your heart, and empower you to be able to live the God-centered, Christ-centered life. You know, if we have to do this whole thing on our own, folks, I'm just going to get real tired here and go take a nap. I mean, come on. You know, we just can't do it on our own. We all have tried our very best in the areas of weakness where we find ourselves in some way, somehow, not meeting the grade or just struggling to get over that flesh again, but you know, it's seeing how God loves you that empowers you. It's finding God's grace and his goodness in your entire life that begins to strengthen you. And it's by the grace of God and it's by knowing how he loves you that change comes to your life. Wow, this is really, really, really so, so important. I, I trust that you're, you're getting this. I really do. I trust that you're getting this. And, and I want to go over and say something else, but it's almost like we've said, I know this is a short video, but it's like we've said enough already. And I want to come back and talk about as he is, so are we in this world. And that in God's perfect love, there is no fear. I'm going to talk about that in the next session. But right now, let me share something with you. I'll just show you a picture right here. And uh, I got to get rid of the notifications just a second, clearing all them. Okay. Look at, look at the picture. This is our backyard. And these are the mountains that we get a chance. Oops. Do it again. These are the mountains that we get a chance to look at. And what I'm talking to you about is God's grace. And so I've been looking at them, but they don't look like that right now. 
um, because that was taken in the fall. They're completely covered in snow. We have snow everywhere, and it's so beautiful right now. It's awesome. God is so great, folks. I'm telling you, the meditation of the heart to get quiet for a moment, to let your soul be at rest for a few moments will make you want to stay there for many moments. Because in that place of peace and in that place of rest, I can feel it right now in this room, the peace of God. You know, there's someone right now, you've been struggling in your throat and um, it's upper respiratory and God just heals you right now. Literally, just like that, it just disappeared. Hallelujah. There's someone else here tonight as far as your eyes are concerned. There is a, a watering of the eyes. It, you water a lot and that's just healed right now. God just set you free. And on the converse, there's someone else whose eyes are really dry. You have to always use drops. Watch what happens in the next 24 hours. Watch how that you don't have to need drops. Don't just take it to take it. And it's okay if you need to take something, you just do what you want to do. But my point is, you'll find yourself not needing to take drops because God just healed you right now. Hallelujah. Wow, there's someone, as far as your esophagus is concerned, you've had all kinds of burning acid reflux. Boom, I command that to just stop in the name of Jesus. It'll no longer be there. Where does this come from, someone says? It's the peace. It comes from knowing how God loves you. It comes from just looking at his grace and getting quiet and letting God be real. Wow. Go to Jim Hockaday Ministry Facebook page and follow us. For sure, go over there to Adventures in Grace YouTube channel and subscribe. And we want you to send in your grace story. So go to jimhockaday.com and find our email, which is jhmi at jimhockaday.com. Send in grace stories of what God's doing in your life, how you're recognizing his influence in your life on a daily basis. We're going to go from glory to glory this year and see things like we haven't seen in a long, long time. Send in your testimonies. Bless you all.